Greetings, YouTube. So I found myself thinking about the film Coco. Um, for those that haven't seen Coco, it deals with a young boy wanting to make a connection with his grandfather through music, his family not wanting to him to be involved in music at all, um, and him inadvertently slipping into the afterlife where the dead live. And he has a limited amount of time to get back to our world or he will just essentially disappear. Um, and he discovers a person that will there that will help him. And this person is also on a schedule. The schedule is if he cannot get someone out here in the real world to remember him on the day, the night of the day of the dead, he will be forgotten forever. It's a wonderful little film, beautiful. I mean, absolutely, unbelievably attractive. I mean, just you will. It, it's just astounding how much work went into that film's animation and the depth of it. It's it's akin to the, what they did for the Fifth Element in the fact that it, there's so much world building going on there. So beautiful, beautiful thing. And it, while they don't specif specify which country it's in, it's in some Central or South American country that celebrates the Day of the Dead. Probably Mexico. Because um, whenever I think of Day of the Dead, I think of Mexico. And it's really cool because all the dead are in this afterlife as skeletons. They are the, Catri the Catritas. I don't remember what the male name is for that. Um, and they all are dressed as they were in life, even though they are skeletons. And while they are distressed that their relative is a human living person in their world, they're happy to see him because he gets to see his old relatives who have passed on. Um, but something bugged me, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Everyone is in this world that has died. Those that are not remembered on the Day of the Dead eventually slip away forever. They just kind of dissolve into nothingness. They have been forgotten, which is the worst fate. It's the true death. So long as they are remembered, they will live forever. Um... And one of the ways that people, the way that people do this in the film is they have a picture. A picture of a person, my wife in my case, a picture of a person on the altar. And so long as that picture is there for the people to see, they'll be remembered. A couple problems with that. What did they do before pictures? And why what didn't the mechanism they used prior to the existence of photographs continue to work so that the dead don't fade away. I mean, in theory, a person would fade away eventually when all of their relatives died. They'd like the, the family didn't have any more kids. In my, my family, for example, my sister had two children. If my sister had not had children, our family would have died out. She's gone. I'm not having kids. I'm 53. I've never wanted kids. I decided 40 years ago I didn't want kids. I do not regret that decision. Um, so what mechanism did they use to remember their ancestors prior to photographs? So that's kind of a glaring hole in their theory about venerating the dead. But another problem is Mexico, and for that matter, South, uh, Central and South American countries, are really Catholic. Really Catholic. When you die as a Christian... You're supposed to be judged on how well you lived your life, and you either go up there to the pearly gates and go to heaven, or you go to Hades. So this is kind of confusing. All the dead are in this afterlife in the film. No one's gone on to heaven or hell. They're all here. Spoiler warning, I'm about to tell you something about the film. One of the characters that, this, that the, main, the main character encounters is a murderer. And the murderer and his murder victim are in the same place at the same time. Think about that. You would be stuck in the afterlife with people who have are rapists and arsonists and torturers and murderers. And everybody's just like, yeah, you know, we're all dead. It's okay. It's cool. And that still doesn't figure out what happened to the entire 
Christian afterlife Kevin Hayes thing. I mean, it's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful film. It's heartwarming, heart wrenching. The musical bits are even fun. I highly recommend the movie. But they don't reconcile the real world religious practices that function alongside the veneration of the dead. I don't even know how Mexican people juggle that particular conundrum. I don't. I don't know enough about their culture to tell you how they reconcile believing in the Christian faith and ancestor worship, which predates Christianity being brought to the New World. Because uh, contrary to what some Christians would tell you, Christianity was not here already. Um, so, I would like to discuss this, and did anyone else notice this? Does anyone else have an answer to it? And if anyone out there is Mexican, or in any Central or South American country, how do you reconcile pre-Christian religious practices alongside Christian, Christ, Christ, Christian religious practices? I'm fascinated by this kind of thing, so I'm interested in knowing. Um, so let's talk about the conundrum presented by the film Coco.